Good rainy morning here in Ohio. It's been raining a lot. We need the rain. Don't need the storms, but we do need the rain. It helps with the uh, gardens and helps with the uh, corn fields. Long story short, oh yeah, the flooding too. We don't need the flooding because we've had a lot, a lot of low-lying flooding I wanted to uh, mention to you this morning some truth again about the Bible and by the way this is Reverend Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. I have a Dr. Divinity degree and a Doctor of Philosophy and Religious Studies I have studied the Bible the majority of my life. Study under many preachers. And one of the things that in, in a lot of my studying I've been doing here lately of course is about the end times. Because we are living in the end times. It has to do with um, people's interpretation of the Bible people are always constantly saying that we're going to be raptured the church is going to be raptured the church the whole church the church every single Christian is going to be raptured if that's so then Jesus was said it Jesus did not say the church is going to be raptured he said uh, the elect, the elect are just basically those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Not every single Christian out there's name is written in the book, Lamb's Book of Life. I'm sorry to burst your bubbles, but it's the God's honest truth. Broad is the road to destruction. Narrow is the road to everlasting life. And only a few, a few, will find it. Now, that's another key right there. A few will find it. In other words, only a few will be saved in the end. Not... Everybody is on the broad road of destruction. Another thing I wanted to uh, bring out was that, uh, of course, in uh, Matthew uh, 24, uh, 29, where Jesus says, uh, hang on a second, I'm trying to bring this up. Yeah, on my computer, I got the Bible on my computer. Got several translations on my computer. Uh, on, uh, like I said here, Jesus, Jesus talking here in Matthew 24. And he says, immediately after the distress or troubles or tribulations of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then, then, not until, not, not before, not, 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 you know, then, while all this is going on, while all this, all this, you know, um, the moon being darkened, the sun won't give its light, this, the, the stars are falling, the, the, the uh, heavenly bodies are being shaken. Then the Son of Man will appear in the heavens. Now, he's not coming back to earth at this time. He's only appearing in the heavens, in the clouds. He's not coming down out of the clouds like a lot of people sing uh, songs about and, 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 and re, uh, tell, tell their versions He's only coming in the clouds. Then he is sending his angels down. He's sending his angels. He's not coming back to earth at all, really. He's coming to the clouds. He's only coming so far. 
Then he's coming. Then he's sending his angels. <sighs> of course, there will be a trumpet, of course, sounding. And then he will send his angels to gather the elect from the four winds. From one end of the heavens to the other. Because there's other places in the Bible that people want to constantly quote Bible verses and, and get their get their false gospel that Jesus is coming back before. Well, why can't they just read what Jesus said? Jesus said immediately after the tribulation, after the distress, after uh, gee wizards. Why can't they read what Jesus said? He didn't say, I'm coming before everything starts taking place. I'm coming after everything starts taking place. And in Daniel, it says three and a half years. We will be going through three and a half years of the tribulation or the distress. And then Jesus comes back in the clouds, sending his angels during the trumpet. Send his angels to take the elect. Not every single Christian from every single church. Get it straight. Start preaching the true gospel. Another thing that gets me too is that uh, there are several translations here. I'm going to uh, try to quote to you before my battery dies. In 1 Thessalonians 1.10 that people want to want to constantly quote in the New Kings James version it says and wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus who believe who delivered us from the wrath to come now there's the word wrath okay I want you to remember this okay and in um, the New International Version it also says, and wait for the Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescued us from the coming wrath. Now, here's something else. New Living Translation. This is a little bit more English version. And here's a different way of saying it, and I think this is the better way of saying it. My battery's about ready to die. But anyhow, it says coming judgment. Okay. Basically, what this refers to is God's judgment. Jesus is going to save us from God's judgment. Not from... Not, not, this has nothing to do really with the rapture whatsoever. This has nothing to do about Jesus coming back and, and rapturing us before anything takes place. Now, this is talking about is that Jesus is going to save us from God's judgment, God's wrath. I wish that Christians, especially many Pentecostal Christians, get it straight. I'm Pentecostal. I'm evangelical. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I have the knowledge of the truth that God has given me. Understand the truth here today. Otherwise, you're doomed because you're telling people lies and there's a special place in God's judgment for people that tells lies. Have a nice day. God bless you.